Hello and welcome to another video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I want to show you a way that we can get data from the cloud-based um, data warehouse Snowflake using Python. So up on the screen I have the web app for Snowflake and you can see I've made a new example database with an example schema and a table inside that called example weather data and I've just written a simple query so far that selects all the data in that example weather data table and you can see it here. It's a table that contains um, cities and dates and, and weather information and we want to be able to get access to that data from Python. So I'm going to be writing my Python code in the spider IDE and the first thing you want to do before writing your code is install the packages. So just in this commented line of code up here, I have the install line that you need to type into your command line um, so you can get started. It's so just pip install and the string here. Basically that will install a Snowflake connector and a pandas compatible Snowflake connector. That's the reason for this bit in the brackets here. So we'll be able to get access to Snowflake and retrieve data from Snowflake in a pandas data frame format. So after you've installed your packages, we can start coding. So import snowflake.connector is the first thing that you'll need to write. And the way that the Snowflake connector works in Python is we create a connection between Python and Snowflake. So we um, basically use our login details and our Snowflake account to get access to Snowflake. And then we create a connector object and and um, we pass a SQL query to that connector object and we receive data back as a table. So the very first thing we want to do is set up our login details to submit to the connection. So what I'm going to do is make a variable called ctx and ctx which is going to contain our login information is going to be equal to snowflake dot connector dot net we go. And so inside that we're going to first yes, um, specify our username. Oh, sorry, just user. I'm just going to write in here the username that I'd use to log into Snowflake. And it's going to be blurred on my screen. I still want to use my actual username and other login details so you can see a full working example there. And um, when we get to here, I could either write a password or there is another way to log into Snowflake when you've set up your account. You could either have a username password combination or you could have um, external authentication. Basically that works by recognizing the computer that you're on rather than a password that you type in. Um, external auth authentication is quite a handy way to set up your Snowflake login because basically that means um, you don't have to write a password in your code that is shared around with anyone else um, that you give your code to. Um, I guess the downside is that with that external authentication, um, you would have to set someone up with authentication before the code would work for them if you sent it to them. So um, they're both quite good. And I'll explain the type of variables you need to pass in for either one. So I've actually set up my Snowflake account with the username and password. So the next thing we're going to pass in is my password. So again, just the same password that I'd use to log into Snowflake. Just on the line below, I'm going to type what you'd use if you had an external authentication setup. Basically, you wouldn't need that password line. You'd just type authenticator equals external browser and that's all you need so username and um, authentication equals external browser I'm not going to use that line though um, the next couple of things oh, there is more that you need to pass into here the next couple of things are to do with our account 
So account is the name of the next variable. And your account name can be copied from the URL of the Snowflake web app. So just from the URL up here, I'm just going to copy the bit of the URL that starts after the HTTPS double slash and copy until just before the first dot. So it should just be a combination of six letters and numbers. And the next thing after that is the region that I'm accessing Snowflake from. You can also get that from the URL. So just after I left off with the URL, just after the first dot, oh, I'm not going to blur this bit out, that's all right. I'm going to copy Australia East dot Azure. Ooh, don't need that last dot. So Australia dash East dot Azure will go into the region. Um, now the next two things you don't need, but they're going to be quite handy to explain. Um, this one is role. So you'll have a default role when you set up your Snowflake account. So that will be recognized um, if you don't want to specify it. But sometimes with different roles, um, you'll need to specify it. Basically, if I go back to the web app and I click into this tab here, I will open up a bit of information about my login. My role is account admin. Basically, different roles will give you access to different databases. Some might be hidden or exposed for the different roles. So if you want to access a role that is different from your, de uh, your default one, you're going to have to specify it. So I'm just going to copy that there, count admin, and pass in for this example. Um, the other one is warehouse, which also you will have a default warehouse. Um, but if you want to um, use this with one that is not your default, then you have to specify in the code. So right underneath role is my warehouse, compute wh. Basically, the warehouse um, is talking about the actual server computers that are running my Snowflake. Compute wh is um, just an extra small, you can see by here, uh, quite a small and cheap server. So I'm just going to specify that. Compute wh. Cool. So those are all the details we need. The next thing we do is set up a cursor object with those login details. So I'm going to call that cursor object cs, set it equal to ctx, what we just the variable that we just created, dot cursor. So we can check that all runs fine so far. Yep, it does. We have some Snowflake objects, no data yet. So the next thing we want to do is que uh, create a SQL query to pass into the connection object, the, the cursor object that we just created. So I'm going to make a new variable called SQL query, and we pass that SQL query in as a string. Now no normally when you um, create a string in Python, you might do it in between um, two double apostrophes or perhaps single apostrophes. That can get quite tricky because um, with a Snowflake SQL query like I've got here, it, the different type of apostrophes mean different things. And um, if you start your string with say a double apostrophe, as soon as it gets to this point here in the query, that string will end. So I'm just going to copy that. The way I like to and pass in SQL queries in Python is just start my string with three single apostrophes and end it with three single apostrophes so anything inside that zone, that start and end is just going to be treated as a string. So if I paste that in um, you can see the string hasn't been broken by the apostrophes in the, in the SQL query and we can just check that. I'll run that bit of code and the variables popped up up here. And if I click into it, that looks good. That's that's how I want it to look. That's the string that's going to be passed into my cursor object. Cool. So the next thing is to 
asset SQL query in. So I'm just going to use CS execute SQL query. Oh, suggested it for me there. I can run that. Still not going to look like any usable data. So well, hasn't returned anything else, but the SQL query has been sent. And the last step is where we get the data back as a pandas style table. And the way we do that, I'm just um, going to set our data equal to data. And we do that using cs.fetch pandas all open close bracket. So I can run that and now we have our data. And looking at it, it's worked how we wanted it to. This data is the same data that we were looking at in the Snowflake web app before. So that's good. That's a good simple example. Um, one other cool trick that I will show you is, um, which you, it's not uncommon to want, is how can we pass Python variables into our SQL query so we can have some variants on like the, the cities or the type of data that we're grabbing from Snowflake. And how we do that is we just want to add more to our SQL query string using Python variables. So let's look at our data. We've got two different cities in our city column here. Let's say we wanted to specify data only from Christchurch. So the way we do that in SQL is we write where city equals Christchurch. And notice Snowflake likes double um, apostrophes around column names and single apostrophes around strings in our data. Oh, did I spell that wrong? Christchurch. Cool. So, if we want to do something like that from Python, but we want to specify the city in our Python code, rather than a hard-coded city in our query, uh, we can do that. So I'm just going to copy this first part of the query. Paste it in here. And just see how that looks. So now we've got SQL query where city equals nothing yet. If I just set variable city equal to Christchurch up here in the code, that's what I basically want to append to the end of my SQL query. So in Python I can just add two strings together using add like that. So let's take a look, see how that looks. Ooh, aim cities. Oh, so I like that bit as well. That's looking good, but still not exactly the same as this query here. Notice this one has the single apostrophes around Christchurch. So the trick here is to do another add before city and just do a single apostrophe inside a double. And on the other side as well, a single apostrophe inside a double. Now if we look at that, that should have written our query in the way that Snowflake expects it. So if we were to run this now, our data contains now only where city equals Christchurch. And now from our Python code, we can change up here city to be... Wellington, and run it again. Now we see Wellington data. So I hope that's been helpful, and um, if you do have any other questions, please don't hesitate to add them to the comments below. Thank you.